Everyone, we've talked about stellar properties. We've talked about temperatures. We've talked about magnitudes. We've talked about what stars are made of. We've talked about all stars, but now we need to talk about one special star. Yeah, which star is that? Ours. The what? sun. The sun's a star? The sun is a star. Cool. How do you know? Well, the sun has a temperature. It has a brightness. And most of the elements in it are hydrogen and helium. Mm, that sounds like a star to me. So what we know about our sun is... Through some mathematics, we know how large the sun is. Uh, you can fit 109 Earths right across its equator. It has mainly hydrogen and helium inside of it, and it's made of a very, very large mass. Pretty big. I and mean, you can see the Earth is really small compared to the sun. That's where those 109 across the face come from. How many could fit inside? Oh, my. Volume-wise, hundreds of thousands. A million Earths can fit inside. And one thing we do notice about the sun when we observe it through special telescopes is that the sun has what we call differential rotation. It doesn't rotate all together. Why would that be? Why would the equator zip around faster than the poles? Well, the fact that it's made out of gases that are superheated make it a plasma. And plasma can move independently. It can move faster in one place than the other place. And the sun does exactly that. Unlike the solid Earth that all rotates together. So there's really six places we want to focus on for the sun. We want to focus on its interior, what's happening from the center of the sun outwards, and then what's happening around the surface of the sun and kind of what we call the atmosphere of the sun. So it takes us back in the day when we talked about why plates shifted. What's going on here? in our observations. Well, basically what's going on here is a hot plate is heating up part of a beaker of water more than another part of the beaker of the water. And as you drop some drops into that beaker, the heat differences cause it to convect. So we get the circular pattern in the liquid. That's really like the top layer of the sun. We see a convection circular pattern of heated gases rising and falling. The hot plate itself is radiating energy into the convection zone. And where is the energy coming from? It's coming from down at the bottom, like uh, underneath everything. So down at the bottom, underneath everything, is your heating element. That's where the energy is created. Then that energy moves into the hot plate. The hot plate radiates its energy into the liquid. And then the liquid, we said, circulates through, what's the word? Convection. Convection. So if we want to equate that to the sun, what's going on at the core of the sun? Well, that's the piece that's underneath everything, and that's where the heat is actually being produced. What's happening there is something called nuclear fusion. So fusion creates the energy. That energy wants to expand outwards and pushes that heat and light into the next layer. And they call that the zone of radiation, or the radiative zone if you prefer. That is how the heat travels from the core out to the next layer. So it radiates outwards, it kind of randomly walks, photons randomly walk their way out through the radiation zone, and then hit that last layer, and I'm gonna take a stab at that and call that the convection zone. Mm, that's because that's where the circulation, like we saw in the beaker, uh, are, is happening. So we get that hot plasma rising and get the cool plasma sinking, hitting the radiation zone again, and then rising, rising up. back up again. So we have many, many, convection cells inside the sun, bringing energy from inner layers to the outer layers. And when it hits that top, top layer, what are we talking about? We're talking about then the energy escaping into space. So when it reaches the surface, it gets to us in? Eight minutes. So once it leaves that top of the convection zone, it travels towards us at light speed. We can see in this slide here, we can see the statistics, the core, in order for fusion to happen, the core needs to heat up to around 15 million degrees Kelvin, which is pretty hot. Mm -hmm. The radiation zone is a lot cooler, and the, radi the energy radiates outwards. Convection zone is even cooler than that, and then we get to the surface of the sun. Here we are, and now you actually get to see the light coming from the sun. The energy that's being produced by all that other motion is now visible. And a layer we call the photosphere, and this is where we see basically the surface of the sun give us its temperature of around 6,000 Kelvin. Which is actually not even as hot as lightning. It is not, but it's still warm. It's pretty darn hot. You'll burn your face off. So photo means light. What does chromo mean? Chromo, to me, could mean color. So we've got a layer that emits the color of the sun. It's a lot of red light, infrared light, 
and it's kind of an upper atmosphere just off the surface of the sun. What's going on in the chromosphere we call solar prominences. And what the heck is this? Well, this is a release of energy that travels along magnetic field loops. And so it makes it look like plasma is shooting up and then falling back down. But what's really happening is it's following a path. And the reason that there is this region of plasma activity in the upper atmospheres is because of areas known as sunspots, which are actually cooler areas on the surface of the sun. So what's happening in the convection zone is materials rising upwards and hits the surface of the sun. If there's any magnetic field lines deflecting plasma away from a certain region, that region kind of traps the plasma at the top. That plasma gets cooler and goes down to maybe 3,000 degrees Kelvin. Still burn your face off. But since it's so much cooler in those regions, the magnetic field can then push the energy to the edges of these sunspots. So sunspots are not just, okay, cooler spots. They're actually places of violent eruptions. So what will happen with sunspots is uh, the sun will become more active at certain times. This generally happens in about an 11 year cycle where you will get an increased activity and lots more sunspots. As you can see in 2001, we had a lot of sunspots compared to in 2005. So halfway through that cycle, we went to a solar min, and then about six or seven years later, we went back to a solar max around 2012. Okay, and then at that time, you actually see a lot more prominences and a lot more of something called solar flares. So solar flares are just these violent eruptions that happen around sunspots, and you get plasma blown off the surface of the sun and creating these solar prominences. The plasma getting pushed off the surface and arcing, like you said, along magnetic field lines. And then there's the outermost layer of the sun. And they call this one the corona, which basically means crown, so it's on top. You can't really see this guy except under certain circumstances. So if we get something to block the sun, we can actually see this outer layer. A lot of the light is given off in high energy light, ultraviolet light, x-ray light. If you look in the atmosphere range, it's actually one of the hottest layers of the sun. Yeah. A lot of uh, conjecture about why it's hotter it might be the movement of the particles, uh, but nobody really knows for sure. All of this activity at the surface of the sun will produce particles, and these particles uh, that are emitted are called solar wind. So they're charged particles, they could be protons, they could be electrons, and they come off in these eruptions. So when you see a solar flare, the solar flare could be so powerful that it actually blows part of the sun towards Earth. What's going to happen to us then? Then we're in big trouble, unless we have something to protect us. And luckily we do kind of have our own shields. If magnetism creates the solar flares and the sunspots, when you get these coronal mass ejections and you get these large bl uh, blasts off the surface of the sun, that material comes towards us, hits our magnetic field, and our magnetic field deflects it. Yeah, the, those particles which followed field, li field lines to get off the surface in the first place can also follow the field lines of the Earth. And since we have a magnetic field protecting us, those charged particles get funneled towards the poles, and right around the poles we get these really beautiful lights we call the auroras. You have the aurora borealis and the aurora australis, which are the northern and the southern lights respectively. And they glow different colors just based on different elements in our atmosphere. So due to the oxygen and nitrogen, you get greens and pinks, and you get lots of pretty colors reminding us that we're being saved by a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. What would happen if we didn't have a magnetic field? Well, there's a good chance that the atmosphere could basically be destroyed. So Mars has a very weak magnetic field and we see a very, very thin atmosphere. So the solar winds can actually push and knock off elements in your upper atmosphere. Your particles actually fly into space. Forever. So should you ever look at the sun? You should never ever look at the sun unless you know what you're doing. So if you got something like this, we've got a device that lets sunlight come in, hits a couple mirrors in here, and then projects an image of the sun on a piece of paper. And here you're looking at the sun without actually looking at the sun. So now that I've lined everything up, you can see a sphere projected onto our piece of paper, and there is the surface of the sun. I can actually see what's going on. I don't see many sunspots today. No, we must be at a solar minimum, at least today. But if you really, really, really want to be safe, you can see the sun behind me and how bright it is, you're going to need some eye protection. So you're going to need these special eclipse glasses that you can wear to block out all that high energy light and just show you 
the surface of the sun. Here, take a look. You can look right at it, a lot dimmer. You've never looked better. Thanks. So it's only letting the really high energy light from our sun. Now that we know a little bit about our sun, we want to compare what our sun does to other suns, and we'll talk about that next time.